Hello everyone. Hello everyone. I want a mic check. So please just confirm me whether you people can hear me. Just let me know if you people can hear me and see my screen. Do you people can see me? Just just give me a um, check on the comment box. Right. Hope my screen is visible. So, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the day four of the online training uh, of the LabVIEW. So, uh, today we are going to get into more complex and I mean more uh, important topics than it related to your uh, application development. So, before getting into the uh, new topic, right? I just quickly uh, brief you what was the topic covered yesterday. So yesterday we just directly started with uh, arrays. Um, following arrays, we are uh, also be seeing how to interface array with loops. Um, following that, we were also uh, seeing how to use clusters, right? So now I'll just quickly take you people into the agenda of today's. So even today we have two sections. Uh, section one will be about designing modular application and we'll be also understanding what is modularity. Uh, so this is one of a very important topic when it comes to an application development in LabVIEW, not only in LabVIEW, any other application which is more related to uh, user interface and uh, a proper way of designing in uh, code will usually use a modular technique. So section two will be concentrating more on type definition and also file logging technique. Right, file logging technique is very important when it comes to your real-time data saving to your offline. So let's get into it. So let's move into the section one. Before getting into it, I also want to mention that uh, we also have tomorrow session going to be live at six o'clock. So I want you people to keep uh, the channel subscribed so that you people can get a notification regarding the tomorrow session also. Fine. Uh, getting to the section one, designing modular application. Right. So. When I talk about modular application, I want to make sure uh, you people understand what is modularity. So modularity is nothing but when you design an application, any change you try to do a module to a module should not impact much on the other modules. So, so when you design an application where the degree of I mean, dependency when you change some module right is less, that is going to be more modular code. Right. This is more similar to your uh, uh, bike spare parts or I mean um, uh, car spare, spare parts where what we do is uh, uh, you try to I mean uh, uh, I mean the, the bike is basically designed with modules uh, in other ways they it is called there as a uh, no like uh, spare parts right so the reason why we have a spare part is in case in future is any problems happening to any particular part of your uh, I mean a uh, bike uh, it is very easy to remove one single part and put a new one. So that it's gonna not bother the other parts when you try to change this. I mean, uh, the default. I mean, the defect one, right? So even in application, even in your application development phase, we are gonna use the same something like that. So a modular code or a modular VI or a module are called as sub VI in LabVIEW. This is what we are gonna see now. We are gonna see how to create a sub VI, how to use it, what is the advantage, what is the disadvantage. We are gonna see everything, right? So a sub VI in LabVIEW is more similar to your subroutines in your textual programming language. So we are going to quickly jump into it and see how this is going to work. So now let me take an example. Let me take an example, a bit complex sum in application. So here you can see there is a code where there is a DAC assistant program. This application uh, is like more towards, I mean, I'll tell you what is this application basically doing. It is acquiring data from a, da a da data card. So data acquisition card. So it acquires the data. Uh, this part does the acquisition. And here what you see is it's a simple conversion. So you can see from a real time information, it converts into a uh, lab accessible data type DBL. So uh, after this, this following code, whatever you're seeing here is basically the same code which we, which we did in the very first day. We were trying to do, um, um, I mean, uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion, right? So we are trying to do Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion. This is more similar to that where you can see uh, Celsius data is converted to Fahrenheit data. So 1.8 into the Celsius information plus 32, right? So uh, here you can see there is an option to choose a mode, Boolean data. This is select is more similar to your case structure where a true comes, 
the terminal in the, in the top will be uh, passed out if it is false the terminal uh, connected to the lower end is going to pass out right so they are going to choose a mode is going to choose either it is going to be a celsius data or it's going to be a parented data and they use it for shift register they try to uh, repeat the data three times and they divide by three to find the you know the the average right and internally they once again repeat some, the, uh, some repeat the same code right so you can see there is a repetition of the same code right there is a repetition of same code here right so one one more good reason to use a uh, sub vi is when you design an application you can see that there are a lot of functions being used and moreover you can see that the function is repeated right so rather than doing an application of repetitive um, i mean uh, functions and repetitive um, logic you can convert them into a sub vi you can see the entire set the entire set here this entire set even this entire set both are same anyway right this one and this one is same so what is happening is we are converting this particular entire code into a sub vi right so which means it's more similar to the custom designed vi i'm going to design my own function that is basically called as a sub vi and i'm going to use it this is making my code more modular right so what happens is i'm just designing a modular function here this is a sub vi and you can see that i can pass the input and take the output you can see the same repetitive code is being used here i pass the data and take the output from here and carry on with the other application you can see the loop is of an iterate and there's a shift tracer which is just taking the data from one iteration to another right so by doing this what happens is you can see the size of the code is i mean uh, uh, reduced a lot the size of the code is reduced a lot and you can also see that uh, the uh, wire clutters you know there are a lot of wire clutters being removed from the code and by using this uh, sub vi there's one more advantage the one more advantage of using a sub vi will be uh, your debugging becomes more simpler the reason why a debugging becomes more simpler is you can have a small part of a code rather than debugging the entire big application the entire bit, uh, application need not be debugged at the same time you can try to debug model module by module right so you can handle them part by part so that you know what is the expected i mean what is the input and what is the expected output will be easily matched right so moving further i'll just quickly show you how it basically going to look like if i have a code like this this is a simple program where we are trying to find the average of two points two values average is being found right so what i'm trying to do is i'm adding two values and divide by two so that it's going to give me the average of two values so it's a very simple application right so this code i don't want this particular value i mean data i don't and very important part is you you can also create your own uh, functions right so this particular function of finding average between uh, average of two values are not available in labview it is not available in labview so what you can do is you can create your own logic whatever you want and convert it into a function right like this so you can see that this particular data this particular part of code is converted into a sub vi and you can see the code i mean the values are still passed inside and taken out right so whatever is here is nothing but internally it holds the same logic here whatever is inside whatever is sub vi you see here it holds the same i mean code which is inside this particular block diagram you see here fine so to do this so to do this i hope you can understand what is the reason why what is the i mean necessity to use a sub vi right so moving further i'm going to tell you how to create a sub vi to to create a sub vi we need two things basically we need two things to create a sub vi uh, one is icon and one is connector pane okay these two things are very much needed icon and connector pane i'm going to show you uh, first what is a icon and how to edit it and how to use it and also i'm going to show you what is a connector pane how to edit it and how to use it right so when you use a labview uh, vi you would be seeing i mean uh, this particular function this particular item will be available on the upper right corner on of your front panel and even your block diagram right so this is basically called as an icon so an icon is nothing but it's a, it's a graphical representation of your particular vi right it's a graphical representation of a particular vi it usually comes with a similar default image and this one or two it basically uh, implies the untitled version of the vi you are trying to use fine so if you use a vi on a sub vi the icon identifies the sub vi on a block diagram of a vi which means that when you are using a uh, sub vi let me say this particular code is if a particular code is converted into sub vi this basically represent that particular code this image you know this visually represent that particular code right so i'll just show you how to customize it so in your front panel in your front panel you can see this on the right top corner as i told you right this particular item you can see it in the right top corner so what you can do is you can right click on that object on the icon you can right click on the icon and you can choose edit icon right you can right click and say edit icon you can see this 
icon editor will be flashing in front of you. It's like a pop-up window. It comes up and it allows you to edit your particular icon. Fine. So what you can do in this is you can use your tools. Right on the right side corner, you can see you can have some editing tools. You can use these editing tools to modify your icon. Right. So you can uh, make this more. Uh, Customize, you know, whatever the image by default you have, whatever image you default you have, uh, can be customized according to your application, right? And not be always the tools you need to use. You can also use Glimpse. You can see there is a there are a few, I mean, uh, tabs here. There's something called Glimpse, which has a library of images where you can just try to use them. Click this so that this is gonna update accordingly. Or maybe you not even use, I mean, uh, graphical information. A glimpse is nothing but a graphical information. You can also use textual information. You can take this and you can type any of this and make some settings of what color, what color you want, what size you want, you know, and whether you want to align it to center or however you want it. And yeah, you can even give colors. You no, know, you can use, I mean, these paints and you can just do the colors. It's like more similar to your, um, your, uh, I mean, paint. Whatever you're using in MS Paint, right? It's more similar to that, right? And um, Usually, when it comes to um, designing an API or I mean set of functions, I mean set of sub VIs, we try to prefer. It is more recommended to try to prefer a particular theme. When I talk about theme, it's nothing but using the same kind of templates, right? So if you see these uh, DACMX functions, there's something called DACMX. It's basically used to acquire uh, the data from the hardware, real-time hardware to acquire a data. You can be using these functions. If you notice this, all these functions have a same heading with the same color as a background, right? So this is basically they use a theme, I mean uh, nothing but a template and depending upon a particular individual, I mean uh, functionality of an object, they change the, um, I mean the, they change the pictorial representation, right? So if you notice how you are supposed to design, you know what is the idea behind designing a, uh, icon is, uh, when you design an icon, it should convey some information which is more related to your, uh, I mean, uh, uh, functionality of your object i mean functionality of your vi so it can have a relative in i mean graphical representation or it can have a description on a textual basis so if you see if you don't edit an icon still your sub vi is going to work it's not like it's mandatory to edit your icon to make your sub vi work i repeat it is not mandatory to edit your icon to make your sub vi work right so but the reason why we do this is this gives more readability to your code Right. So when I say readability is something, but you can see if I create a sub VI in this fashion without editing a icon, right? You can see all my sub VIs. It need not be this only the only sub VI in my in my code. There can be n number of sub VIs. All these sub VIs will have same kind of information. Like uh, you will not be knowing like what is that particular sub VI is doing. Rather, if you can design in such a way, you can see this is a temperature conversion. You can see this is thermo cup. I mean thermometer mentioned and temperature. It's trying to work. I mean doing conversion of your temperature data. So this gives more readability of your code. That's the reason we use an icon. Icon basically gives more readability of your code. Because if you use a graphical programming language, most of the time you have to prefer going for a more readable to readable code, right? So coming moving back to your connector panes. Yeah, moving back to your connector panes on your front panel, on your front panel right uh, upper corner, you'll be able to see this kind of I mean connector panes, this kind of connector panes very next to your icon. So what are these connector panes is like these are very important you know as I was telling you even if the, I'm going to the previous slide even without changing editing your icon even without editing your icon like this still your subway works it is not mandatory to change your icon but to increase the readability of your code of the subway you create it's better it's better to create a icon or edit an icon right. So whereas coming back to your counter pane, it is very much needed. It is mandatory to edit a uh, counter pane to create a sub VI. If you don't edit a sub VI, I mean a counter pane of a sub VI, you will not be able to access any data into it, right? So how you do it is, so what is this basically is you have, I mean, multiple terminals, each, I mean, rectangle or each, I mean, uh, squares, whatever you see, it, it represents a terminal of your function. What I mean is, you can see there is an input terminal and an output terminal. You can pass the input here and get the output here, right? So these uh, function, I mean these terminal, I mean these uh, squares are actually representing your um, uh, your um, inputs and outputs. You can assign them to be your input and output. So how we are gonna, I mean, configure it is so you just right click. You can see that you can just simply right click on your uh, connector pane. And go to patterns. When you click on plan, when I select patterns, you can see there are n number of inputs and output configurations you can have, right? So always you have to try to design it in a such a way. You try to design it in a such a way that 
you have all your inputs on the left hand side and all the outputs on the right hand side right usually if you see any of the ready-made functions what you have in lab view usually is designed in a such a way that all your inputs are assigned on the left side and all the outputs are assigned on the right side right so it's always better to configure in that way right so there are it's not like mandatory to always do it in that way, but it is a recommended way of designing a sub VI. Okay? There are some recommendations you are supposed to follow when you create a sub VI. It's always recommended to design in such a way. Right? So you can link it. You can see there are some terminals that are not linked, whereas this few terminals are basically linked to the inputs and the outputs. Right? Anyway, I'm just going to quickly take you people to a demo of how to do a sub VI, how to configure a sub VI. I'll just keep, I mean, quickly do it. Right? So before that, these are the steps which is needed. You know, configuring your icon, configuring your counter pin is what is needed to create a sub VI. Right? So these two are needed to create a sub VI. I'm going to tell you how to use it. After creating it, you're supposed to use it. Am I right? So I'm going to show you how to use a sub VI. Right? To use a sub VI, what you do is uh, after configuring, uh, after finishing the code, configure your icon, configure your connector pin. After configuring your icon and connector pin, uh, you have to save your sub VI. Right? After saving your sub VI, you're supposed to call this sub VI into a main VI. So with the actual VI, which is going to call this a small part of your code into the uh, functionality purpose, right? So for that, what you do is you right click on the block diagram of the main VI. You right click on the block diagram of the main VI. Select a, main VI is nothing but the, the actual VI, which is calling the sub VI to do a process. That's basically called as a uh, main VI, right? So right click on the block diagram of the main VI, right? and choose the option select a vi from the functions palette then what you do is you are supposed to uh, browse for the sub vi as being saved in your system your local disk you have to choose it and drag and drop it on your block diagram of your main vi yes so once you do it you'll be able to access the um, the, the sub vi will have the icons visible i mean icons i mean textual visibility and uh, how you pass the data and do a process and take the output it is through the connector panes information so connector panes information tries to pass the data into your sub vi the sub vi will process it and the output comes through to the main vi through the in output terminal of the sub vi right and the sub vi is visually graphically represented using your icon whatever you design right so uh, there's one thing i want to quickly show you before going to uh, demo the terminals we configure the terminals as i told you right when you're configuring your connector pane we configure the terminals there are three types of uh, terminal you can configure one is required terminal another one is recommended and the third one is optional right required recommended and optional your required terminals usually look bold in color right it looks bold in nature right so when you leave your recommend i mean a required terminal unwired when you leave your required terminal unwired you can see there is a broken arrow a broken run button in your main vi you'll be able to see a broken run uh, button in your main vi uh, when it comes to a recommended and i mean optional terminal basically you can leave them unwired usually they have a um, i mean um, optional is whenever you need it you can pull it even yesterday if you're seeing when i'm using a bundle by name or unbundle by name i can pull the function to create much more terminals that's basically optional terminal and even for uh, trying to show you a string subset right there was a terminal where it was asking the length it was taking a default value there's a bracket in which it was having a default information even if you leave it unwired it basically works with the default value which is being wired there right that's basically called as a recommended terminal right anyway i'll just show you a demo quickly i'll quickly take you to a demo so i'll take my lab view as usual i'll create a new vi right so you can see that you you have a counter pane and this is your icon right your icon will be available in both your front panel and block diagram whereas your counter pane will be available only on the uh, uh, front panel right what i'll do is i'll quickly try to create a vi or uh, what i do is i'll try to have right i'll just quickly open your uh, I have a ready-made code. Now this code, I hope you will, people will be remembering. You know, uh, I mean, a couple of days before, I was trying to do, I mean, a currency conversion uh, to demonstrate a case structure, right? So where I'll be trying to say how much is a uh, Indian rupee and choose what the conversion to be, 
right? I'm going to choose what is the conversion is basically going to be. And let me say if I want it to be in Canadian dollar, and if I run this program, it can say what is the equivalent value of uh, Indian rupee in Canadian dollar. I'll be just, I mean, doing this code. It's very simple code, right? So I'm going to show you how to convert this particular code into a sub VI first. And then after doing it, I'm going to tell you how to call it into a main VI. Right? So to do this, first of all, what you have to do is I'm first going to configure your icon. Just watch. I'm going to configure this icon. How I'm going to configure this icon is uh, I'll right click on this icon and say edit icon. Right? Once I say edit icon, you can see the um, icon editor being flashing up. Right? So you can see there is a by default, this is a picture you usually have. What you have to do is you have to quickly delete it. So I'm going to edit and say uh, clear all and then I'm going to give a frame. Always have a habit of giving a frame. If not, you can see that you, you will be seeing that some objects will be flying on your uh, um, block diagram. So rather what I'll do is I'll double click and draw a function and go to glimpse quickly. And um, if I have anything more related like uh, some conversion, you know, I, I want to show that it is doing some conversion. So I'll quickly take some pictures more similar to a conversion, right? Maybe this one looks good. I'll simply drag and drop it something like this and I'm going to give some textual information. So I can name it as, you know, currency, you know, I'll just make it as currency. right and um, I can say where I want this to be aligned uh, so you can see this overlapping to avoid this overlap I'll just quickly use the last two you know I'll just use this and uh, it is overlapping anyway right so I'll just make it like this and if I want to give some colors I can just quickly so take some light colors and then try to give it here. So this is the icon I really wanted to look, I wanted to be looking like, fine. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay. So you can see this is a uh, function. This is how the function is gonna look like. Whatever I'm trying to create, this is how the function is gonna look like. Whenever I call the sub VI, the pictorially, it represents this currency conversion. Now I'm gonna show you how to configure the, I uh, mean, um, uh, the current name. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I can right click on this counter pane and I'm going to say patterns and there are n number of patterns you can choose, you know, or I, as I told you, you always have, try to do it in a such a way, take the center line as a, uh, you know, the, the reference, try to choose how many inputs and how many outputs you have. So if you see in my application, I have two inputs and one output, right? You can see here two controls I have and one output I have. Don't consider your constants. Constants are going to be placed inside the uh, sub VA itself, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure it uh, with two inputs and one output. I can configure it like this, right? So just see how I'm going to relate this terminal to a particular input and output. I'm going to show you how to configure this particular uh, uh, terminal to this inputs and outputs. Just watch. You can see here, uh, once I touch this terminal, you can see the wires pull, the connecting tool in lab view, you know, the, the wiring tool in lab view is visible. So I click on this, right? I click on this move my cursor click on this again once again click and click click on this and on this so this is how you configure your counter pane you have to choose how many number of inputs and outputs you have and after choosing the number of inputs and outputs you are supposed to also edit your character icon it's very important to edit your icon to give more readability but this is mandatory editing your um, uh, icon is very much important after doing it you're supposed to save it you're supposed to save this I'm gonna save it, right? Once you have done it, this is no more needed. Your sub is basically done. Your template, this is gonna act like a template and I'm gonna close it, right? And this is gonna be the main VI. Let me say this untitled one is gonna be the main way where I'm gonna call the actual sub VI, right? How I'm gonna do it is I'll come to the block diagram. I'll come to the block diagram and right click on the block diagram and uh, I'll just search for a option called as select a VI. 
I just click select a VI. I'll select a VI is nothing but it's basically talking about a sub VI. Okay. So I'll just choose select a VI. And I'm supposed to browse where a particular um, VI is being saved. Right. So this is the sub VI which I have been creating it. So I'll choose this, drag and drop it like this. Right. So by doing this, what happens is the entire such a code, no big code, it turns into a small function. And very quickly, I can just simply right click on this terminal. You know how we to create a control indicator through shortcut. Right. So I'm going to do faster, I mean quickly by creating a shortcut, right click, create control, same as such. You can see whatever is being configured on the sub VI, you can directly get the information here. So right click, create control you can see the currency choose currency is also ready and right click create indicator yes so i can just quickly give some value and run this so this is going to give me that data right so by doing this what happens is there are a lot of advantages i told you uh, the size of your code program reduces you can quickly call the repeated logics and uh, and basically, if you see, um, it is more recommended to design an uh, application which is within a visible area, one single screen. So if you keep repeating the code with wires, clutters, and then uh, even with functions, this is not going to happen. Better you can use a sub VI, right? So if you ask me yesterday's relation with a cluster with the sub VI, if you notice, if I have a very big application, uh, if I have a very big application, this is the maximum terminal, input output terminals I can use, right? So in this case, um, basically you can see that's 28 terminals if you count it you will be understanding it has 28 terminals now let me say you have an uh, um, application which has more than 28 or like me let me say 100 inputs and outputs you have in an application in those kind of application you will not be able to f I mean you will run short of I mean terminals am I right so in those cases you'll be using clusters yesterday's topic what we are seeing right so those topics you'll be seeing clusters will be used so when I use a cluster what happens is um, you can club a bundle of i mean i mean a certain individual i mean items i mean front panel items into a single control and i can just pass it inside and on the main vi i can just try to uh, deassemble them and try to use it again right so this is how you basically create a sub vi right so and one more thing is when i call a sub vi right when i call a sub vi just right click you can see there is a double arrow to extend the visible area of your uh, um, palette so when I select a sub VI, you can see it suggests what is the data type color. You know, if you use any of the function, any of the function you have been using, it always suggests what is the color of the terminal. How it happens is because through the sub VI, it knows what is the data type you are being configuring. When you are configuring the current pane, when you are configuring the current pane, it was basically uh, also configuring the data type. So by this method, it basically takes the information accordingly. Fine. So. I'll just quickly move to the next topic. So I'm just going to the section number two, right? The section number two is going to be type definition, right? The section number two is going to be type definition. I'm going to quickly tell you what is the type definition. This you can uh, somewhere related to your sub VI when it comes to creation and being using it. It's it's nowhere related to sub VI in the way it works. Sub VI is totally different from type def, but whatever you're doing on the uh, you know on the block diagram part where you are customizing your own code as a function right you're customizing your own code into a particular function something like that you can also customize your own controls you can customize your own controls on the front panel and that type of I mean, customization is will be basically termed as type definition right but there are more complex things when it comes to a customizing of a control which i'm gonna cover now fine so when i talk about i mean um, uh, customizing a control on the front panel right so how you do it is, uh, you can drag and drop a ready-made function. You can't create a new control. It's not possible. You can't create a new control. But what you can do is, if you have a, a I mean, a, a control or indicator, it can be for control or indicator. It need not be always control because the name suggests it's a custom control. But you can be doing it for your control and indicator. Fine. So you can drag and drop an available control from the palette, come uh, from the controls palette. And then what you can do is, you can edit it. Right, you can edit it. To edit it, what you can do is you have to right click on a particular um, object, front panel object, and go to advanced customize. You have to choose this option. Once you choose this option of advanced customize, you get a window 
uh, the name of that window will be control editor window that window will allow you to customize you can see this is a um, window you know the control editor window in this window you can change the size of or color or anything I mean more related to the appearance you know appearance of the control can be changed right that is not the I mean the best part of this the best part is you can try to configure in three types you can try to configure it to be either a control type or a type definition type or it's going to be a strict type def type right so you can do the editing work and configure it to be either control or type def or strict type def there are three options you can choose it to be any of these three options right so i'm going to tell you now i'm going to quickly take you through what is going to happen if you just configure in control manner and i'm going to show you what is going to happen if it is configured for type def or a strict type def what is the difference between in configuring them in a three different manner right okay what i'll do is i'll just quickly move to the next slide so if you configure it to be a control type you know so it's on again it's going to be the same you do all the editing work right you do all the editing work of how the appearance of the sub vi is supposed to, i mean uh, 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 control is supposed to look like and uh, you save it in some location right you save it in some location that location where you save it it's going to act as a master copy i repeat it i use this word clearly it's going to act as a master copy whatever you do the editing work on the uh, control editor uh, window that is going to act as a i mean master copy and from the master copy you can call it many times into uh, your uh, main codes you know you can call them in many times so what happens is when you configure this to be a control type once you configure this to be a control type there will not be any connection established between a uh, master copy and any instance of this i mean uh, control you are being using in your main code right so any changes you try to make it on the um, on your master copy will not be affected or, or will not be updated into your uh, instances fine so by this mean what happens is it's just a up, i mean edited version of the code i mean edited version of the control which are being basically creating fine coming back to type definition if you configure it to be a type definition so there is a link between there is a link being established between your instances and the main copy right so what happens is when you configure this to be a type def uh, your data type is always fixed so the master copy is made be let me say the master copy is made it to be a i32 data type integer 32 data type your all your instances wherever you are using this i mean control will always have the same data type of i32 you will i mean the individual instance cannot be changed of its data type right so it forces the data type so that every uh, i mean instance is going to have the identical data type so that you don't want to worry about the data type right and let me say in the future uh, you want to change the data type of this i mean uh, uh, all the instances let me say you want to change the data type of all the instances you don't want to do it individually you don't want to do it individually you can directly go open the master copy edit the uh, data type of the master copy and apply changes to all so what happens is wherever you use this control wherever you use this control this these controls are all going to get updated with a new data type right apart from that your color or your your size or whatever other changes except your data type any other changes you make will not be reflecting on your instance right so your instance and the master copy are basically linked only with your uh, you know data type right apart from that none other changes are basically going to affect the instance right so i'll just once again tell you what is the difference between a control and type def when it's a control not even the data type are linked that's the actual idea not even the data types are actually linked so that your if your uh, master copy is having a i32 and you are calling this in many instances in many codes you are calling it so even in the codes where the, there is a in, individual instance you can individually change their data types right i mean your master copy doesn't force any of the i mean i mean any of the uh, attribute of that master copy into any of this instances fine whereas coming to a type def type def and control i mean control type are basically same only thing is uh, your data types are always fixed as per the master copy whatever the master copy has a i mean uh, uh, data type all your instances are also going to have the same data type it is not going to change at all right if this is clear let me move to the next data type i mean next type it's strict type def so when it comes to strict type def right 
it's like I mean um, uh, it's very strict the name itself says it's very strict that you cannot change most of the attributes of your instance all the uh, I mean informations or all the attributes of your instance are totally uh, matching your uh, master copy one of the things you can change is your labels can be changed your your description about the particular object can be changing and the default value when I say the default value right whenever you drag and drop an option I mean uh, 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 information right like I mean uh, your uh, control or indicator right it uh, basically starts with zero or it's going to be false or it's going to be empty string it's going to be those are the default values when you drag and drop it comes with that particular value right so those values can be made or I mean can be configured in a such a way it can have a different value compared to your uh, main uh, I mean uh, master copy right apart from that even the maximum minimum limit even those things cannot be changed fine so if you can get it, I'll just quickly take you people through a demonstration because this one topic, right? It's it's uh, it's better to show you a demonstration to make you people more comfortable with this. See, now what I'm trying to say is, before what I did, I was actually having a code. That's what a sub VA I'm talking about. In a sub VA, we are actually having a code, and we just made this code to be a sub VA, and we are calling it, right? More similar to that, I come to the front panel, I do some changes to some of the item. Let me take this meter for example. I'm gonna use this meter. I'm gonna edit this meter now right this meter is gonna be a simple indicator right simple indicator if I just pass a value let me say if I pass a value create constant if I pass a value let me say 6 and run this program it is gonna indicate a value 6 right so very simple this is a simple indicator right so to edit this to edit this what I'm gonna do is I'll right click on this meter and I'm gonna go for advanced I'm gonna go for advanced and I'm just gonna use an option called customize right I just go for advance and I just choose an option called customize so this is a window where you're gonna edit the uh, control this is called as a control editor window so this window will not have a block diagram it looks more similar to your front panel but doesn't have a block diagram at all right so here there is an option to choose whether you want this to be a control or type definition or strict definition you can uh, strict type definition so you can choose what you want this to be and you can save it right you can save it and you can save it in a specific location and on the many VIs or you can repeat in the same way also not a problem you can call it many times and you can use it many times and whenever you call it many times those time I mean those I mean instances when you call right they are not going to be related to your master copy if this is going to be a control method that's what I'm trying to show you so I'll just quickly show some editing works so what I'll do is I'll just change the size of a needle or you know just, just just quickly I'll just take it um, I'll just increase the size of the needle yes and even the size of this object I'll just quickly change it I'll keep it like this even this label right let it be not an issue so I'll just say okay so you can see I've just edited the uh, I'll just quickly remove the background also I don't want the background I'll, like, I'll keep it like this right so I'll keep it like this so this is what I want it to be looking at like I'll just quickly do some editing work and I just say it as control just watch here I'm just saying this to be a control and I'm gonna say five apply changes you can see it is being applied on the main instance you know wherever you're calling it and I'm gonna save this uh, let me save it here I'm gonna save this as a customized you know um, control or meter let me name it as meter this is a meter right right so I've just configured it and I've been uh, making it to be a control first let me show a demo on the control so what I'll do is it has been done right so whenever I want it not only this VI in any number of VI's I can just right click uh, on the front panel and I can say select a control I'm gonna say select a control and I'm gonna choose it and drag and drop it here right so I can try doing it many times as many number of times I want I can use it in same way or even a multiple VI I can just drag and drop it any number of instance I really want right so rather than dragging and dropping from these palettes I can customize any one of this and keep this is gonna be my template I mean uh, control and I'm gonna always ca call the template control so that it's gonna be I mean more similar in all my applications right so this is how I want to design this uh, and this is the idea I want to do, design this custom control fine right so now 
you can see that I can right click on this meta instance number one. Now this is a instance number one and this is going to be instance number two where I've been using the same control, custom control. I can even change anything like even including my representation, right? You can see this first instance is basically I32 and the second instance is basically DBL. You can see they are not even, I mean, matching or I mean, there is no influence of the master copy in this instances, in these instances. So and moreover, you can see that I can even change the size and the limit wise, you know, I can say this is going to be 100 rather than 0 to 10. I want this to be 100. And individually, you can do any type of changes to these instances and any of the changes you try doing on the uh, master copy. What I'm trying to say is I'll just file open this master copy, right? And if I try doing some editing work, for example, right, this, uh, let me say I just try to resize it like this. Even this one, I try to resize it. Or maybe if, let me say I want to change the color, for example, uh, I'll just quickly change some colors to it. Right, sorry. And then just give a different color. You can see I've just changed, uh, slightly changed the color, like it's not visible. I'll make it like this. The background I'll change. Right, I change the color. After changing the color, right, so I'll just say, Right, I'll just say save it. You can see uh, there is no option for me to apply changes, right? I can't apply it on my instances. I can save it, not an issue, but this is not going to anyway affect my uh, previously used instances. But right now, if I try to call it, you can see right now, if I try to call this, right? If I try to call it in the another instance, you can see it comes with the updated version. But what happened to the previous version? There is no change in the previous versions. Right, the previous versions are going to be the same, right? So a custom, I mean, a normal control type doesn't have any correlation, or I mean, I mean, the main master copy doesn't have any hold on your instances, right? So now what I'll do is I'll quickly take a new VI, and I'll also open my custom control. I'll open my custom control. This time I'm going to configure this to be a type def, right? This time I'm going to configure this to be a type def. Before it was a control now it's getting configured to be a type def fine so now what i'll do is i'll save this right it has been configured for a type def and i'm going to save it and notice that this has a representation fixed to be dbl right this data type is fixed to be dbl now let me say i even change it to i32 for example i'll leave the data type to be i32 on my custom editor window i mean control editor window right i'll make it i32 and i'll say file save Right, and it is made it to be type def, and I close it. Fine, I'm going to call it in multiple instances. Right, I'm going to say select a control, say drag and drop it here. Uh, as I told you, I need multiple uh, instances. Right, fine. And you can see when it is a type def or strict type def, you can see a small black color mark on the left corner on the, uh, I mean the indicators or controls on the block diagram you'll be seeing this it means that it is being type deft right so here if you see there is no problem in changing the size you know let me say i want to change the size right i want to change the size i want to change the labels no not an issue or i mean i want to change the uh, values you know i want this to be from uh, minus 10 let me say to plus 10 you can see these changes are happening on instances see these changes are not being affected you know they are not being holded or they are not being forced by the master copy but one thing is different even you can see i can change the size even in this one not issue they can be changed they are not always fixed right but one thing fixed among these people are i mean these two instances are their data type just watch uh, when i right click on this object you can see i can't change the representation representation is nothing but the data type right so you can see i can never change it even here right click this instances since the the master copy has made it to be a type def you are unable to change in any of the instances when you call the type def, right? So if you want this to be updated, what you have to do is the data type, if you want this to be changed, you have to open your um, custom control and you can right click and you can uh, representation, you can make it to DBL. For example, I'll bring it back to DBL, right? I brought it back to DBL and you can see file apply changes, right? Wherever the code, I mean, wherever the VI I've been using this control, when I say apply changes, you can see it is basically updated. And once again, I will save it and keep it closed. And you can see 
both are changed to be a dbl data type before it was a i32 data type now it is being changed to dbl data type which means that always when you configure to be this to be a, a type def your data types are enforced right as per the master copy all the instances have to follow the data type maybe not anything else right apart from that everything is fine right whereas this is not possible with your control right the ultimate reason why they've tried doing this to avoid correlation dot and data type mem i mean memory allocation automatic memory allocation which is actually a bad practice to avoid these problems basically we try to make sure the data types cannot be changed so everyone or i mean uh, uh, if you want to uh, keep designing an application with dbl we have to i mean use dbl only we don't have, give a option to change the data type also so usually what happens is in in uh, most of the projects in when it comes to industry right uh, many people will be working on a single variable they what they do is they share a variable on a uh, network and uh, uh, many people will be working on subset of a project you know everybody will be working on a subset of a project in the, those cases what happens is uh, let me say i'm a, i'm a person number 1 who's trying to do some process on this variable and give a output updated on this variable right so there's a person number 2 who's using the same variable let me say he is doing some testing and he's trying to update it and he's trying trying to uh, make his own application using those variable right so what happens is if i keep changing or if i keep editing or if i keep i mean uh, developing an application with my own data type and if the person number two is using a different data type and what happens is internally when i try to combine them or integrate them together my my application and the that person application what happens is there's going to be a lack of i mean i mean uh, data type uh, compatibility right so in this case is what happens is the coercion dot will be enforced right which i was showing you in the first day to avoid all those uh, things right basically we try to go for type def if this is clear with you people i'll just go quickly uh open the same uh, custom control right and i'm going to show you how this is going to basically work when i try to configure this to be a strict type def right what i'm going to do is i'm going to say choose this to be a strict type def uh maybe i just uh, once again can bring up some some different changes what i'll do is I'll just take a tool palette. I'll just try to uh, make a, a black color on the, you know, I want a black color um, needle. Okay. So after doing this, most of the people who are seeing this, I mean, uh, demo, right? Once you do this, all these changes you do using this tools palette. How do I create a, get a tools palette? Is I'll just close it and show you again. View. You have a tools palette right when you open it this can make sure the colors can change you can use this to this is a background color this is a background color so any of the background object here you can use this i mean item to be colored uh, you can choose a color here right fine so after finishing this what happens is you have to choose this arrow right and choose automatic tool selection give it on and close it if you don't do that what happens is your in lab you have a special feature that whenever you move your cursor around and whenever you touch a, a particular item your cursor turns according to the required i mean uh, uh, function right according to the required function it changes its uh, i mean functionality so that happens only through this so in the tools palette you can see leave it to be arrow i mean uh, the arrow mark the normal one and choose it to be automatic uh, tool selection to be on and then file apply i mean uh, file and save it right so what i'll do is i'll quickly uh once again call it did i choose it to be yeah, just a minute i thought i didn't change it right yeah this is supposed to be a strict type of yeah i did it and i'm gonna close it and i'm gonna come back call same you know in multiple instances right i think i have two instances where i'm just calling them Right. This is going to be a strict type def. Now I have configured it to be a strict type def. Uh, as I told you, yes, the data types cannot change because data type didn't even change when it is a normal type def. Strict type def will never usually allow you to change. You can see the option is only not, I mean, available, right? So you cannot change it. Even here, you can see there is no representation option to change your data type conversion, to do your data type conversion. But the worst part is you can't even change the color or size. You know, you can say that I can't even change the size and uh, one thing I can just basically do is the labels can be changed if you have a description about this particular object saying I mean description nothing but giving some information about this I mean uh, control what is this control doing that's basically a description that can be changed yeah the default value can be changed and yeah individual values can be changed you can see the individual values will not reflect if they can individually have their own values and uh, even the minimum value to the maximum value cannot be changed it is always fixed it's as per the main VI I mean the main instance right if you want to do any updates 
file I want to do uh, open for example let me say I'll open this you can see that I just make this to be 100 for example I say 100 and I'll say file apply changes you can see it will get updated here right now it is in I mean a DBL data type right both are in DBL data type if I say representation to be I32 and file apply changes it gets updated on all the instances right so I will just save this so this is how a type def, strict type def and um, control uh, type is going to basically work. Fine. So if you have any queries related to this, this one concept is like, I mean, uh, 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 has to be practiced by uh, uh, by the audience who are just seeing this because uh, this is one thing that might sometimes co I mean, confuse people. Right. I'll just quickly tell you the brief of, of this, I mean, type def. You can configure your front panel object using um, option called as uh, type def how you do it is right click um, sorry I'll take a new way so I'll take object it can be any object as I told you I'll take object right what you can do is you can just right click and say repress I mean sorry say advanced and say custom you're gonna use custom control and customize it so in this window you can do all the editing work and choose either to be control or type def or strict type def fine so if you choose it to be a control there is no connection between a main copy or main I mean a uh, uh, the control and the instances when you choose it to be a type def nothing is basically I mean attached or nothing nothing is stringed except the data type right whatever data type you try to choose here that's going to be affected in all the instances when it comes to your strict type def it's not only the data type most of your size color the, the limits the information whatever it has the attributes it has is going to be the replication of the master copy right so this is what is a type def is basically so if this is clear or let it be right this is clear i'll just move on right so the type def is basically completed so coming back to the last part of today's se i mean uh, session it's going to be the file logging technique i'll just uh, quickly show a demonstration better rather than uh, because i have uh, 10 minutes left out i'm going to show you how to do this fine so to do a file log right right click on the block diagram and you can see there is a separated dedicated palette called as file io to do this process fine so there are n number of functions you can see that can use i mean that can be used to write i mean different types of files depending upon what type of file you want to write or what data type even you want to write so all these informations are basically classified as uh, separate functions uh, what i'm going to do is quickly i'm going to show you people how to use uh, these two functions because these two functions are most I mean handy so I'm gonna quickly show you how to use them I'll go to file I.O. I'm gonna use write delimited spreadsheet fine so if you see what is this function it's a, it's basically a sub vi kind of function when I say sub vi it means that inside there's a code which is basically working and, and NI people have directly configured this and made it ready made to you and available on the palette so you people can directly connect it and make this work right so very important terminal for here is you can see there are four terminal i mean five terminals in the in the front left side the topmost terminal you can see the name is file path so file path is nothing but you are supposed to say uh, where the file is supposed to be saved now you're going to write a data into a file right file i was basically used for logging purpose so what you can do is in labby whatever generated or in labby whatever data you have you want to bring it to your excel sheet for example or any other sheet you want to bring it then you can use this function to write the data from here lab you to the third party uh, I mean uh, a sheet you can try using this particular function the name of this function I'll just give it label you can see it is write delimited spreadsheet okay so I'm going to show you how to create a file path right file path come to the front panel right click on the front panel go to string and path file path control I'll drag and drop a file path control like this right make sure you connect it to the right terminal like this this is file path control what is this file path control doing you can allow uh, lab you to browse and choose a particular file or the location where you want this information written to our excel sheet and that excel sheet should be saved in a local disk somewhere right that i can choose it from here right so before doing it before doing it what you have to do is i can right click on this uh, browse option this is a browse option now right click on this and choose browse option this browse button you know right click on the browse button and say uh, browse option and I'm gonna say new or existing when well, I say new or existing what happens is if a file is already available it will try using the existing file let me say the file which you're trying to I mean uh, I mean uh, uh, log it right it's not even available you want to create it then what happens is this option of new 
will try to create a new file also right it will not be an available file you can also create a file from labview and write a data into it fine so i'll just say okay so i'll just change the option to be um, in the browser option to be um, new or existing after this what i do is i click on this just watch her move my cursor hit it on the file and close it automatically right so that is what it's basically going to do so what i'll do is i'll take a array because i'm planning to write array information right you can try because excel sheet is cells of data i take array and let me take a string information drag and drop a string uh, i can even go for two dimensional i told you yesterday right? i click here and say add dimension and uh, i'll pull it like this and i'm going to give some information this need not be i mean a uh, uh, string data it can be i mean uh, numeric or i mean integer or your sample data it can be anything i'm just showing a demo with a uh string array i'll just give a data like this you know so uh i'll just name it as some random names and uh, right so these are the four information let me say i want to write it can be any size you know as per your wish you can just give any information into it right so here in this function you have two terminals one is 2d data terminal and you can see it's 1d data terminal and you can see the terminal color is orange color right but this is a polymorphic terminal even if you try to pass a string data you can see it basically changes its color so you don't want to worry about uh, these data types basically what are the data types you can write this in this particular function this particular function is limited to three data types one is dbl another is integer and another is going to be your string these are three data types you people can try preferring for this particular function right that is all it is so what i'll do is i'll quickly try to show you the uh, location where i've been saying this is the location i think i just uh, want to create the file because there is no file in the name what i've just given this uh, log sheet right i don't have a file with that name exactly right so what i'll do is i'll run this once just watch it i'll run it once and come back to the same location you can see that sheet is being created before it was not here it is being created so if i op try opening it this year right it says that i mean uh, uh, the extension is uh, not the regular extension because you are creating it through labview do you want to open anyway and just say yes you can see whatever data i have just been ri writing in labview it's clearly visible like right? uh, yeah you can see it is being showing here whatever data i have been writing right so same data has been written so if you want to keep on concatenating more information into this you know so i'll close it if you want to keep concatenating more information you have a option to append, append the file right so create constant by default it is false if i say true right already what is the data been written this is the information being written right i'm going to quickly change the values so i'll just say hello name it as every uh labview tool some different names i'm just giving i'll just name it as instrument so this is a new set of data i'm just giving and i'm just leaving this to be a true uh there is option called as append to file i'll leave it true so now what happens is if i run this program you can see that uh sorry you can see that the data are getting appended to the previous data which was available in this if you leave it false what happens is it is going to rewrite the data right it is going to keep rewriting the data if you want to append it uh, you yeah, i mean loop by loop you want to write a new data into this file yeah you can try giving a append true and then it is going to keep writing this information now if you want to read it right i'll quickly show you how to read it now let me say the data are different i can even edit it here i limit by right uh, here i'm going to see uh, let me say see you right so like i'll delete this maybe i don't want this even this i'll delete it right so after doing it i'll just quickly save it i'll say yes so i'll save it and close it i have just done the saving already so now i change the value right so i'll take a new vi again now i'm going to go for file ivo this time i'm going to use read spreadsheet right i'm going to use read spreadsheet drag and drop it i can choose what data type i want to read here right uh, i'm going with string because this is a data type i want to read i'm going with string and i'm supposed to say the file path once again i'm going to go for string file path control when you read it you don't want to change the 
you know the browse option the reason is you can read only the file is existing am i right so it is fine to leave it to be existing no need to change it i can connect it from here to here i'm supposed to choose a file right so i'll just choose this file this is the file i want to read it in lab view and you can see all rows and first row you can choose anything you know first row will usually have the headings of what are the i mean uh, cells you have i'm going to choose uh, all rows create indicator the shortcut method i'm just using right so i'll just run this program you can see whatever changes i made here the new data set is being saved is being read here right so most of the times you'll be using i mean uh, logging uh, when you acquire a data and you want to log it in lab view you can i mean log it in excel sheet it is possible usually we try preferring this to be on uh, uh, writing the data right usually we try doing it in a uh, you know uh, uh, numerical data type for your 2d where i mean the numbers has to be written right the numbers can be written using this data type uh, but if you see this file io you have n number of function if you want to go for a binary function or a textual function or it can be a configuration ini files right so there are n number of things available but uh, depending upon uh, the time limit right due to the time limit what i'm doing is i'm just quickly finishing it uh, with these two but this, these two are sufficient enough for i mean writing and reading a normal data fine so with this it's it's already time what i do is i'll just with this i'll just uh, uh, conclude the session and i want you people to once again write your queries again and uh, i mean we'll we'll try to address all the queries if it is not solved now i see many people chatting proactively in the comment section i really appreciate that so because i i i really appreciate the conversation i mean rightly i i really want i mean people to uh, tell their suggestion and maybe that helps me also to clarify some doubts because when you interact right i can correct you people very quickly so i really appreciate that i mean uh, you people are i mean discussing there so in case if there is any i mean uh, questions which is left you know uh, unanswered or uh, by anybody maybe i'll just try to pitch in and just answer them not a issue so what i want to tell is tomorrow we are going to make it more even complex because that's going to be a, i mean uh, last day of the uh, five day session tomorrow is going to be a very important day where i want to bring much things into your uh, notice about labio and how it's being used in industry and other stuff so i want you all to even uh, stay tuned and i mean uh, wait for tomorrow session and obviously i want you all to stay safe and uh, try avoiding moving out so stick to the quarantine and lockdown so all the very best everyone so see you have a great day bye i'll just try to cut the streaming anyway thank you